Hi guys, this is Misty from The Book Rat, and this is my response video to chapters 1 through 17 of Pride and Prejudice for the Jane and June Pride and Prejudice read-along. Um, if you want to join, come on over to thebookrat.com and sign up. Okay, so, um, I didn't do the little intro post, a little bit about me and my experiences with Jane. Obviously, I'm pretty diehard Janeite, or I wouldn't be hosting Jane and June. So this is definitely not my first time reading Pride and Prejudice. Um, and I don't even think I could give you a number of how many times I've read it. I think it is the book that I've read the most in my life. There was a phase I went through that lasted probably five years or more where I read it three or four times a year. I would just crave it. It was like my comfort book. It was my blanket. Every time I would read a bad book, or I would go through a stretch of books that just almost did it but didn't quite do it for me, I would pick up Pride and Prejudice. So every three months or so, I would end up rereading it, and I mean it would just be a quick reread. Sometimes I would only read my favorite sections, but I read it a lot. So it's to the point now that I recognize quotes. Anytime anyone parodies a line or quotes a line, Anytime a writer does a mashup, I can tell you which lines are actually theirs and which lines are Jane's. Um, it's a little obsessive, and I'm sounding really nerdy right now. Moving on. Um, my impressions of the book so far. So this is for chapters 1 through 17. I'm going to give you impressions now that I've read it a million times, and my impressions when I first read it. Um, when I first read it, 17 ends with um, Wickham coming into the picture and relating to Lizzie how he was ill-used by Darcy. Um, so wronged. So when I first read it, I wanted to believe Wickham, I think. Um, I was intrigued by Wickham. I think I knew, though, not having ever seen the movies or read anything about the book. I came on it pretty much on my own. Um, I think I knew that he was not going to be you know, the good guy, and that was because I had read Emma first, and he reminded me a little bit too much of Frank Churchill. You know, he's the dashing young man that's really charming and has a way with the ladies, and that suspect. You know that suspect. We know this now. Not about Wickham, but about the dashing young, charming men in our lives. They are suspect. It's a little too easy to be charming to every lady if you can be charming to one. Um, so I didn't really want to buy what Wickham said, but at the same time, all we've seen of Darcy so far is that he's kind of an ass, you know? I mean, yes, he likes Lizzie, and we see that pretty soon, even though Lizzie doesn't. So you want to like him, but it's just... I was still torn when I first read it. Um, didn't know which way it was going to go. Now, having read it, I just chuckle a lot to myself when certain things come up, and I get these like little giddy... like. When you're on a roller coaster and you know you're approaching the hill and the best part's coming, every time I come up on certain parts that I love, I get that little feeling. Um, I love when Jane is at Netherfield sick and Lizzie comes to be with her. I love the entire scene. I reread that one many times. When Caroline asks her to take a walk and Darcy watches her and all of the fine eyes comments and him baiting her about wanting to dance, or she thinks he's baiting her, but really he just wants to dance with her. I love all of that. So, those are my highlights. Um, those are my favorite parts of 1 through 17, and I think they're kind of a sign of what's to come, because my best favorite parts come later in the book, but that gets the ball rolling, and I love that. I think Jane Austen is a master of characterization, and I'm not the first person to say that, so I'm not going to elaborate too much on that, but everyone's distinct. There are a lot of characters being tossed around in this book. The entire large Bennett family, all of Bingley's family, and then Darcy, and the neighbors, and everyone at the balls, and you just, it's not hard to keep them straight, I don't think. Um, they are pretty distinct and memorable, and feel like Jane was writing people that she knew. You know, she probably was, and there were probably people that knew her that were like, damn you, Jane. Especially if you were Mr. Collins, I'm sure you wouldn't have wanted to find yourself in Jane's book. But you probably wouldn't have realized it was you if you were Mr. Collins, because you're kind of adult. Um, the standouts. Obviously, Lizzie's my favorite character. 
um, probably in all literature. <laughs> I just love her. I always love Mr. Bennett too. I love the relationship between them and the relationship between Lizzie and Jane. I think they're great familial relationships in this, which is fantastic because the book is all about connections and how the Bennets are kind of not ideal connections because they're all a little cuckoo. Um, there's a lot of love there. Even with Mrs. Bennett, who's a complete nut job, she loves her kids. She's devoted to her kids. Um, she might not understand them, but she's there. And so that kind of stands out for me. Um, I don't know that I notice new things in the characters when I with each reread, but um, I think sometimes if I haven't read it in a while, there are things that I forget that when they come up I'm just still just as tickled. I love <laughs> all of the interactions with Mr. Collins. He just makes me cringe, especially now because I always think of him as um, a couple of people that have played him. David Bamber and I don't know the guy's name that played him in um, Lost in Austin, but he always would like smell his hands, you know, this guy that I'm talking about. And it just makes me think of that, which is just creepy. I don't think that he's so sinister as they make him in that movie, but he is um, memorable, to say the least. Ugh, he's so shudder-inducing. I love Collins' interaction um, and his place in the book and what he does. Um, I love Lady Catherine because I love to hate her. Mm, I just want to knock her. Um, my favorite characters I don't think change, though. I am die-hard, down the middle, Lizzie and Darcy. The eligible men of Pride and Prejudice, Bingley, Darcy, Wickham, Collins. What's so interesting about them is Bingley is perfect for Jane, and that's clear. Um, and Mr. Bennett makes a comment about how they'll be taken advantage of because they're so sweet to each other. And I think that they're a nice side love story to have. Wickham is interesting, and I always want more of his story. I do give Wickham a lot of leeway that most people don't. Everyone just writes him off and he's a bad boy and he's a scoundrel. There's nothing wrong with him wanting to marry for money, that's what the women are doing. So I think it's interesting to have him there because it's sort of this double standard thing. It's not okay for him to do it, but that's what the women are set out to do and meant to do. They're meant to marry well. Um, so I think it's really interesting to think about his character and where he's come from and of course he's gonna want to aspire to someone with money because he grew up in Pemberley. I find Wickham interesting. I think he also makes a great counterpoint to Darcy, and I love Darcy. He's a great dynamic character because he's so arrogant, but you know there's more there, that he's just really reserved, um, and he does need a good dressing down, and you can take that however you want, but um, you know there's more there, and he can be a good guy. And he's smart, and he's tall, and maybe that doesn't matter to anyone. I know it matters in the book because they make reference of it many times. But I love a good tall man. So um, Darcy's definitely piqued my interest right from the beginning. And then there's Collins, and you have the sad prospects of what it could be, um, and what if Lizzie or Jane were good, dutiful daughters. Um, what their life would be. You know, realistically, if you're not holding out for love and if you're being obedient, you're going to end up with Collins. So, you've got all these men in the mix that make it really interesting. You've got, like, the pure love with Bingley. You've got the challenge with Darcy. You've got the charm and the bad boy allure with Wickham. And then you've got hard, cold reality. And so having all of them all at once is really interesting and really smart, I think, on Austin's part. Um, so, question six, the Bennett girls stay at Netherfield. My first favorite scene of the book. I know I just talked about this a little bit. Um, I love everything about this. I love the embarrassment of when Mrs. Bennett and the other girls come for tea or whatever and to check up on Jane. Um, they're mortifying. I love the reactions to Lizzie when she walks in covered in mud because she walked after a rainstorm to see Jane. So improper. I love the flirtations but mixed messages types of flirtations and the jealousies and 
the ribbing and everything that goes on that's really subtle and well played and the groundwork that it lays. Love, love, love the Netherfield stay. Mrs. Bennett sending her daughter in a thunderstorm to go visit a man so that she'll be stranded in his house. It's a little creepy, Mrs. Bennett. You might want to dial that back a bit. Um, but funny. Gotta love her. She's a nut job. Judging only on what has been given so far is Wick unbelievable. Meh. Um, as I already said, I don't quite trust him because he reminds me of Frank Churchill, who is not trustworthy, um, and also because he's just too charming, but there's always got to be something. You know, for a good lie to work, there's got to be some truth in it. So it does cast some doubt on Darcy, um, but I'm ready for him to explain, you know. Even when I first read it, I was ready to know what really happened. Um, impressions of the three after this revelation. Curious about Darcy, a little hesitant about Wickham, and a little disappointed in Lizzie, but understanding. I think we all love a good gossip, and we all love to be vindicated in our opinions of people. So if I was sure that I didn't want to like someone, and someone comes along and gives me this fantastic reason not to like them, I'm going to be like, yes. Thank you, and I'm going to run with this. But of course you know that you're not getting both sides, and you're being really rash, um, and you're really just satisfying your own venomous side, so it's hard to root for, but it's completely understandable, and I can't help be amused by it. Um, but you know, Lizzie knows better. You're just waiting for it to all come out in the light. Um, number eight, the humor in the book so far. There, I think that people who haven't read Jane Austen and just think, oh, it's classics and it's chick lit, don't get how brilliantly witty she is. There's so many different types of humor in this book. You've got the obvious humor of Collins and all of his buffoonery, um, but you've got Lizzie and Mr. Bennett's wit and their kind of ridiculing and snarky natures and I think Jane Austen was the original snarkster. Um, and then you've also got the more kind of subtle narration humor that you can tell is Jane's voice coming through and she's kind of making fun of the whole culture of matrimony and the need, the imperative to, to get married and to marry well. Um, and so I, I always try to explain that to people that haven't read her or that have started and just can't get past the language or think that things are serious and take it as being really um, straightforward and dry and I think you can't look at it like that. She is tongue-in-cheek most of the time in this book and I love that. So Freeform, last little bit. I want to know what you guys thought. If you haven't read the book, why? What's holding you back? Um, and I mean that seriously, I'm not saying like, what are you thinking? But no, really, like, what is it that has put you off of reading Jane Austen? Um, what are your impressions that make you think you don't want to read it? And if you have read the book one time or a billion times, um, what do you think of these different questions? What are your responses? Um, so that was my round one responses, chapters one through 17 of Pride and Prejudice. Um, thanks for sticking through it. I know it was kind of long. Make sure that you stop by the book rat so that you can see the links to everybody else's responses and get involved in the discussion.